Uh-oh. And Craig is not with us right now. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. TV commentator. Craig, it's great to have you back on the program. Straight, Steve, it's great to be back with you. Craig, we're at the final days leading into this historic election. Oh, yeah. An estimated 32 million Christian yes. voters who regularly attend church, mind you, are unlikely to vote, not going That's to right. vote. Why is voter enthusiasm in this demographic down compared to 2020? Steve, that's a great question because, really, uh, you're talking about a small number of evangelical born-again Christians that are not going to vote that could really control how the outcome is for the swing states. Uh, In 2020, 6.9 million evangelical born-again Christians didn't vote. That figure is going to be higher than in 2020, this election. And one of the reasons is, just like you said, um, uh, there has been over $30 million spent where any Christian evangelical on, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook, anywhere they're at, they're seeing ads that are professionally made, AI tested, and done so that it suppresses the Christian votes. In other words, Christians are so frustrated. It's coming from the Evangelicals for Harris, and that campaign is so sophisticated. They know they the Christians won't vote for Harris because of abortion, and Israel, and Christian rights, and the war on Christianity going on, but they know they can confuse and depress and, and create the idea. You know, it's so bad between the two candidates, I'm not going to vote. And so it's voter suppression that's going on, and that is the danger we face in the next few days. So, Craig, uh, with that said, has there been an effort uh, in Christian circles to try to get out the vote and uh, try to propel some of those low-propensity Christian voters to the polls? Yes. So, you know, Charlie Kirk, and uh, his group has been trying to do it, especially in Arizona as a swing state. Not much more than that. Uh, Ralph Reed has been trying to do it with his organization. A group called Turn America Around Fund has been trying to do it with videos of Pastor Greg Laurie and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, people that the Christians would recognize in videos why voting is voting against your values. Uh, by, uh, if you're not going to vote right. If you don't vote, it's the same as voting wrong because what you're doing is you're allowing those who want to promote abortion, those who want to uh, take away Christian rights, those are going to be the voices that are heard while the Christian voice is stifled. So these videos uh, are trying to offset that, but it's probably 20% of what the radical left is doing in identifying the Christian audience and suppressing that vote. Craig, Trump mentioned in a recent town hall that if all Christian voters turned out, it would have a major impact on this election. Trump. Have the Harris and Trump campaigns effectively reached uh, this group? And what issues do you think are most resonating with these voters? Oh, well, so for the voters, you know, it's like everyone else. Uh, you know, if, if Trump's talking about inflation, then that's the number one issue. And inflation is the most immoral tax there is because it's a hidden tax. But also close to it is, is Israel because with Israel, you know, in Genesis says, I will bless those that bless thee, I will curse those that curse thee. That's on the heart of evangelical Christians. The whole issue of abortion, Harris's number one issue, number one issue is abortion, radical abortion, uh, even after birth allowing the death of a baby. It's, it's something that is horrific and fantasized, and she wants to make it a national law, and yet this is something for Christians based upon Psalm 139, where, you know, God knew you when you were in your mother's womb. These type of issues are the key issues for Christians, and it's not about uh, personality. It's not how Trump tweets or how he sounds or how he comes across or whether or not he's perfect. Because we're not voting for a pastor. We're not voting for Jesus. What we're doing is we're trying to strategically limit evil. And that's the Christian position from the beginning of American history. 
to be the voice and conscience of the community to strategically limit evil. And that's why these Christians need to understand they need to vote. They can't sit home. And if they do go out, it will change the school board, Steve, the county, the city uh, offices, the state, and, yes, nationally, uh, it will change that as well. Craig, switching gears uh, here a little yes. bit, I want to get your thoughts on big tech. Uh, the yes. American Institute for Behavioral Research and Technology documented Google and YouTube search results in the 2020 presidential election. It reported one-sided results that could have yes. influenced possibly up to 6 million votes. Do you right. see the content out there being sufficient to change election results in swing states this year? Uh, and what are the consequences of tech influence on future elections? It is interesting question because I think it's going to be broken up. But before we talk about that, what about this election? Steve, this election, it, the, the impact has been felt by those low information uh, uh, voters, the ones they call the, uh, the undecided, you know, the yeah, they, they may be independent, they may be young, they may, but they're low information buyers. And a lot of Christians are that way too. Uh, you know, they're studying the Bible, but they're not looking at political issues. These are the people who will go to Google and search for something. And if you go for like uh, an issue of abortion, everything will be about demonizing Trump on abortion. Everything will be about how great uh, Kamala Harris is on abortion. It, it, basically with Google, you're going to have 95% of all searches going through Google. You're going to have close to 85% of the people only going to page one. And that's all the slanted, biased media. That's all the propaganda from the radical left media. And to find anything conservative, if you're lucky, it's down page 20 or page 30. And so it's impossible to find and people don't find it. And that's, 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 terrible that that is election interference that is giving the radical left a lot of free publicity and and really shutting down through uh indirect censorship any other alternative voices now here's the thing elon musk he's been the warrior and and for all of his faults he has given us x where people can speak out freely he has been able to uh, try to help trump out uh, talking about stopping the censorship, setting up uh, uh, GOTV, going door to door and, and trying to uh, concentrate on the swing states. But also, he is developing a product that could put Google out of business. And within the next couple of years, that product will probably make Google insignificant. And most people will be going to go to uh, Elon's and maybe some other ones. They are giving an alternative at how you search and what you search for using AI. Craig Huey, uh, always a pleasure to have you on. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And join me along with Tiffany Meyer on election night. We'll bring you the results, take you on the ground to watch the campaign parties, and dive deep with a panel of experts. Don't miss it. Tuesday, November 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. The Nation Decides 2024 starts right here on NTV. And don't forget, Daylight Savings Time ends on Sunday at 2 a.m. It's that time of year to fall back and get your extra hour of sleep. That is all we have for you tonight on the Capitol Report. For Round the Clock original news coverage, visit us at ntv.com slash live and download our NTV mobile app. I'm Steve Lance. Have a nice evening. See you next week. For those who cherish tradition and stand for the values that built this great nation, Republican Red Winery proudly embodies the spirit of American greatness. Let's raise a glass to forging our own future.